I'm Carrie Doherty. And I'm Tim Cash. And today on the show... Do you know Torrance Penn? I don't really know what kind of girl I am. Kate Cannon is ucker awesome. I mean, I'm the boss. I got I got stuff to do. And we celebrate the miracle of female friendship. I love you. <laughs> I love you too. <laughs> this is the IMDb Show. It is Friday, December 22nd. And it's time for your IMDb Brief. This month, the 2007 Oscar-winning indie film Juno celebrates its 10-year anniversary. You guys remember Juno, right? It's like 16 and pregnant, but with a killer soundtrack and wittier dialogue. This is one doodle that can't be undid, Holmes Gillett. I love Juno. I saw it when it came out, I loved it then, and you know what? I think it still holds up. Juno also has a few fun firsts attached to it. It was the first Fox Searchlight movie to surpass $100 million at the box office, and it was the first screenplay that Diablo Cody ever wrote, and she won an Oscar for it. Can you imagine? I am not shocked, though, because I have been in love with Diablo's voice since I read her memoir, Candy Girl, A Year in the Life of an Unlikely Stripper. It is so funny, and I seriously hope she adapts it for the big screen one of these days. But it was, of course, Juno that launched Diablo's career, and she has since written films like Jennifer's Body and Young Adult. Let's show him what he's been missing. No, he's seen me recently, he knows. But his wife hasn't seen me in a while, so. Diablo Cody has also made a name for herself in TV, creating shows like The United States of Terra and One Mississippi alongside Tig Notaro. And she's currently expanding her writing to the stage, adapting Alanis Morissette's 1995 album, Jagged Little Pill, into a musical, which is exciting for me on so many levels. And for anyone who's feeling nostalgic for Juno and wants to see another coming-of-age movie about the complications of being a high school girl, look no further than Greta Gerwig's Lady Bird, which is a big contender for this upcoming award season. And it was so, so good. I seriously cannot recommend it enough. And then maybe you'd learn to pull yourself up and not expect everybody to do everything. <laughs> Like Juno, Lady Bird has also been nominated for Golden Globes in the categories of Best Screenplay in a Motion Picture and Best Actress in a Motion Picture, Comedy or Musical for Ellen Page and Saoirse Ronan, respectively. Juno didn't take home any awards that night, bummer, but Lady Bird still has a fighting chance, so fingers crossed. And one last fun fact to bring all of this great female-centric film stuff full circle. There's a scene in Lady Bird that features the song Hand in My Pocket by Alanis Morissette, which was recorded in 1994, the same year Saoirse Ronan was born, and it appears on the album Jagged Little Pill, which Diablo Cody's adapting into a musical, and it's the same album that took home a Canadian Music Award in 1996. The name of the award? The Juno. Like the city in Alaska. No. Technically, I should probably sing this intro because today's guest is the writer of Pitch Perfect 1, 2, and 3, which opens today. An actress, supervising producer of 30 Rock, and now a director, making her debut with the upcoming comedy Blockers, Kate Cannon. Welcome to the IMDb show. Hey, thanks for having me. Great to have you here. Yeah. I can't have you sitting here without talking about Pitch Perfect first. <laughs> How did you come up with the characters? In particular, my favorite, Fat Amy. I'm the best singer in Tasmania with teeth. Well, I knew I wanted to find a, you know, like a diverse group of people to make up the Bellas. I was out one night with Amy Poehler, and she was pregnant but hadn't told people that she was pregnant yet. And she was like, I just feel so fat. I'm just Fat Amy. I'm just Fat Amy walking around, whatever. And, and then in my head, I was like, oh, someone who calls herself that so that other people won't, Don't say or that she can take it, you know, right. yeah, right, so she can she can take it and own it as her own. Yeah, so tweet like you don't do it behind my back. For Stacy, I went to the uh, book launch for Pitch Perfect, and there was a group that was performing as close as you are to me mm -hmm. now. This woman was just like touching herself. I was like, oh, that's interesting. A young person who doesn't understand how sexual she's being because maybe she doesn't realize like how attractive she is <laughs> or whatever. And then Aubrey is based on me a little bit. Let Taka finish this. Oh, excuse me? When I was younger, I was on so many sports teams and I was like the captain of the team and right. I was all about winning and which is not great to admit because people <laughs> she's a little too much but I did I always there is always that person on every team that's like we need to win we have tradition to uphold there is a strong female lead theme and friendship there is that very important to you with the work that you do. Yeah, it's definitely become more and more important as I continue in my career. Like, I'm a, a woman in a position 
to create stories that are important to me and those that not exclusive but just happen to be um, stories that I find interesting are female driven. Give us one piece of trivia okay. for the Pitch Perfect 3 IMDb trivia page. Um, the character Chicago okay. is named so because that is where I'm from. It's that simple? <laughs> that simple. Thank God you're not from <laughs> Buffalo. Yeah, well, we don't do anything with dignity, okay? And now you're in the director's chair for the first time. Yeah. Tell me about blockers. All emojis have a secret meaning, so like trees are weed, and this thing is yas queen. Yas queen. Blockers is a super funny comedy where it's three high school seniors, best friends, who make a pact to lose their virginity on prom night. So she's gonna get roses, yeah. kiss, and then touch his eggplant. But the movie is actually about the parents finding out about this pact and then them trying to block them from having sex, <laughs> I'm trying to stop them. I'm in. I read it and I'm, and again, the, the subject matter of like young women's sexuality and the double standard and all of that felt very important to me. And I, I also thought it was crazy funny. And I was like, yeah, I, I, I'm thrilled to be able to direct this movie. Kate Cannon, don't go anywhere. We're gonna be taking some questions from fans in just a minute, but first. In honor of Pitch Perfect 3, we checked in with all of you about your favorite female friendship movies of all time. My favorite female friendship movie is Girls Trip. And let me get a cherry coke. Can we just bring it down a notch? Mm. <laughs> because it's about a group of girls who remain friends through thick and thin. Bridesmaids. You do. Because it's funny and it's naughty and it's vulgar. Mm sisters because I saw it with my sister and I always loved Tina Fey, Amy Poehler, super relatable. Frozen because my little girl, she's autistic. She watches every day. It's a routine. I love it. I sit there and watch it with her. And it's like a good thing for a father and daughter to get together. <gasps> oh, Cheetah Girls. Why? Because it's amazing. It's funny. It's, um, it's a sing-along and we love singing. Wonder Woman. I really love the relationship she has while she's on the island between her and her mother. They both have the same goal, but different ways of understanding and getting to that goal. Lilo and Stitch because Lilo's older sister is very loving and caring and wants the best for Lilo. I really like the movie Pitch Perfect and like the friendships that go on in that movie because it's just really cute and it's super funny. Well, let's do it tonight. <laughs> All right, let us get into our Twitter fan questions, yes? Okay. 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 All right, this is exciting. At Christina Spencer wants to know, I would love to know which Bella was her favorite to write, create. Also, what's her favorite line from any of the Pitch Perfect films? Okay, so my favorite character to create, and still to this day is my favorite to write for, is Lily. Do you guys want to see a dead body? I set fires to feel joy. I ate my twin in the womb. She's really, really fun to write for, and um, that kind of expanded and became this own, this own thing. Um, and then my favorite line, that's a really good question. I like the fact that Acapella now Aka. has this Aka, uh -huh. you know. Aka like, vernacular. Just putting, yeah, just putting Aka in front of anything. Oh, I am Aka G! Woo! Oh, stop, girl, stop. And now the actual Acapella communities in real life use it. Use it. Uh, we got a tweet from uh, Georgia X Tweets. How much of the film was improvised by the cast? There were certain characters who improvised a lot. So Rebel and Adam improvised a ton. It's a very playful atmosphere where they're trying a bunch of different stuff. And so writers will write jokes and then there'll be certain characters that will improvise. It's okay, at the end of every episode, we go over our weekend watch list, basically what we're watching this weekend. Well, obviously I'm watching Picture Book 3. Mm -hmm. Of course. Uh, but then I'm also really excited to watch uh, The Post with uh, Meryl Streep and Tom Hanks, and Steven Spielberg directed it. Given what's happening in the yeah. world, I mean, I'm really, really excited to watch really people who are very good at their jobs. Thank you, Arthur, for your frankness. Kerry, what are you watching? Obviously, I'm going to see Pitch Perfect 3 this weekend. Very excited Thank about it. Thank you very much. Yeah. And just because it's the holiday season, I'm also going to rewatch Home Alone, because nice. who doesn't love little Kevin McAllister and that great moment with Catherine Harris? Kevin! 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 It's the... Yeah. Yeah. Keep the change, you filthy animal. What about you, Tim? What are you watching? For me, it's Downsizing, Matt Damon's film. Mm. I just love the idea of it and the fact that it comes from the guy who did The Descendants. So there's an element of like fun sci-fi with that, you know, thoughtful filmmaking I'm into. Nervous? Little. And then also Bright with Will Smith. 
big budget. Just really curious to see what Will Smith looks like on kind of a different platform. Do not wink at me like that. And if you guys want to watch any of the shows or movies that we've talked about in today's episode, you can add them to your IMDb watch list. And if you don't currently have one, I can show you how to make one. It's super easy. Look up a movie you're interested in, click the plus sign, and boom, it's added. Then the next time you don't know what to watch, open your watch list. Okay, of course, Pitch Perfect 3 is out today. Congrats on that, and thank you so much for being here on the oh, show. Oh, thank you. Thanks for having me. And to you guys watching at home, happy holidays. I hope you have an amazing time. We're going to see you next Friday. But for now, we'll leave you with the best bits from this week's trailers. What if I asked you to do one little thing? Why do you need to do this? Because it's what I'm good at. I thought I ordered meat sauce, not weak sauce. If you do anything to hurt this family, I will destroy you. <laughs> ah!